Hello, I'm Ron Covell. I recently got a JS Tools Deep Throat Shrinker and it's quickly become one of my favorite metal shaping tools. There's a lot to like about this machine. First is the portability. It comes with a clever wheel base which is very stable in use but allows easy movement of the machine so you can bring it to the work. The machine has a six inch throat depth. This allows you to shrink deeply into a panel and the machine has lots of power even when shrinking at maximum depth. The jaws are quick and easy to change. Each jaw cartridge is held with a single screw and one twist of the included hex key is all it takes to remove and replace a cartridge. There are four different jaw sets available, shrinking and stretching jaws for steel, and shrinking and stretching jaws for aluminum. The jaws have serrations for gripping the metal, but these are much finer than on most similar machines, so they leave minimal marking. This is a particular benefit on soft metals, like copper and aluminum. The machine is rated for 16 gauge steel, and it can work aluminum up to 100 thousandths. I'll give you some demonstrations to show the robust capabilities of this machine. Very often it takes more than one tool to shape a piece of metal. This track roaster nose is a good example. It's made from six pieces of metal and I've used tape to show the edges of the top panel. I've made a pattern from paper trimming the edges to meet the tape lines. The next step is to transfer this pattern to a piece of metal and cut the shape out. So here's the sheet metal panel cut to size and I'll shrink these edges which will start to draw them down. So let's try this against the nose. And you can see that already it's moving in the right direction, but this edge does need to go down more. So we'll shrink it again. So you can see how much more curve the panel has now. We'll try it against the nose, and we're actually pretty close to what we need, but I am going to shrink the center of this a little bit more. So you can see we have a lot more curl on the panel now, and we'll try it into place. And I think we're about done on this side. So I'll transfer the shrinking now to the other side. Okay, let's try this onto the nose. And it seems like both edges fit quite well. So the next step is to dome the center, and I'll use the English wheel for that. I've been working for about an hour on the English wheel, and you can see that I've domed the center of this panel, and I've also smoothed out the edges, which were pulled down with the shrinker. So let's try this into place. I will align the edge of my panel with the tape line. I have a small clamp in the back I'll use to pull it down. And now we can see how well this panel matches the contour of the nose. It's a nearly perfect fit on both sides. So this is a great example of how the English wheel complements the work of the shrinker. And this is how a lot of serious metal shaping gets done. Most of my work has been on cars and motorcycles, but every now and then I like to do something different. Recently a friend asked me if I could make a windshield for a miniature boat, and I thought that would be a cool project. Here, I've made a mock-up of the windshield from cardboard, and I'll use this to make a template for the windshield frame. 
I made the template from quarter inch plywood, which is the same thickness as the glass I'll be using. The bottom channel for the glass is made from two angles bent on a brake. I'll curve them to the proper shape by stretching the flanges. It didn't take long to form both angles, and I have them clamped together now. You can see they create a perfect channel for our template to fit into. Now let's form the top of the windshield. To make the top of the windshield, I'll start with an angle. I'll curve this to match the template by shrinking the wide flange. With some slight adjustments, I was able to get the fit just about perfect. Now I'll bend the flange into a J shape. I'll do this with the beading machine. The first step is forming the flange to a 55 degree angle. This is the setup I'll use for that. Now I'll change the dies to complete the J shape. Next, I'll cut all the pieces to size and try them into place on the boat. With all of the pieces fitted in place, I'm ready to weld the sections together. Well, here's the finished windshield. I sent the frame out to be polished and I must say, I'm delighted with how it came out. Remember, the shrinker and stretcher were the primary tools used to do the shaping on this project. Shrinkers are often used for curving angles, and I wanted to find the maximum capacity of this machine. After some experimentation, I found that it can shrink a three inch flange on 16 gauge steel. That's pretty impressive. Let me show you just how easy it is. It's taken about 10 minutes to curve this angle this much, and I could go farther if I wanted. But take a look at how flat I was able to keep the metal in both directions. It takes a powerful machine to shape metal this effectively. This fine quality machine is made in Sweden and Trick Tools is the primary distributor in the US. There are machines made in China which look almost the same and sell at bargain prices. I've used several of these machines, and although they look the same, they don't perform nearly as well. With shrinkers, as with most things, you get what you pay for. The JS20 shrinker is made without compromise, and I predict it will become one of the most used tools in your shop.